I am Reverend Julian James, Assistant Pastor of Revival Time Assembly, bringing you a word in keeping with the theme of the church. We are living in the righteousness of God. It's taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, from verse 27 to verse 31. And I believe it's a message for the time in keeping with our theme of Revival Time Assembly. God bless you as you are prepared to receive and walk in the righteousness of God. Could you turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 1? But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And, and base things of the world and things which are despised, God had chosen. Yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But by him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according as it is written he that glorieth let him glory in the Lord praise the Lord Father we thank you for your word we thank you God for your people take the praise now touch your servant in Jesus name you may have your seats I want to speak to you for a little bit on the subject, living in the righteousness of God. The theme of the church for 2020 is the righteousness of God. But I realize when looking through the, the word of God, that the underlying concept of righteousness righteousness is a life and somebody asks who is a Christian I believe the question could have come up because of the different lifestyles that Christians display the question comes up, who is really a Christian? And somebody said, and anybody that believes that there is a Christ is a Christian. And that is well accepted because of religion. Once they believe there is a Christ, they profess that they are Christians. But what do we believe as children of God who is a Christian? We believe that a Christian is a man or a woman that believe in Christ and live and practice the principles of Christ and his word. So there is a difference because of religion, it is defined that way. Once you say Christ, you are Christian. But thank God that God has made it absolutely clear through his word that Christianity is a lifestyle that is pleasing before God. And thank God that the Pentecostal church is aligned to such a belief. Amen? Now in the scripture that we have read, the highlight of the church theme is righteousness. And I want to say to you this morning that if you are a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ and you are honest to yourself, it sometimes becomes a little task to live this righteous life. 
When you have to go to work tomorrow and you have to be right in the center of a bunch of people that does not know Jesus and the conversation tomorrow would not be a Christ-like one and you have to sit there because that's where you're working. That's where God placed you. It's not easy. It's not easy to be saved. Born again. Serving Jesus. And you are the only person in your home that is saved. And you're from a big family. And everybody else have a different belief. It's not easy. But yet you are commissioned by the word of God to live a righteous life. But when Christians take their salvation for granted, we find ourselves not even realizing that we are not holding on to the divine promises of God. And God has given us some promises here and some benefits for living in righteousness and living a Christian life. And if you read in verse 30, you will get the message this morning, what God have in store for you. He said, but of him, i.e. in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. Praise the Lord. I always say that Christians must be bright people. And you may not have a bachelor and a degree and all of that, but that must not make you a dunce. Christians are bright. We have a book in our hands here that surpasses any other book in any other language. And God has promised his church, he has promised his people to give them wisdom. But you have to seek wisdom. The wisdom of God is a benefit to a Christian that really and truly wants to know God. You will seek him. No Christian cannot live without being wise. You must know within yourself that you are serving a God. And this God speaks. He ministers to you. I don't know about you, but God speaks to me. I hear the inner voice telling me things that even though sometimes I doubt it in my mind, I still seek him to get clarity that God is in control of even my mind. But you have to will it over to him. You have to will your thoughts. You have to will your ambitions. You have to will your sense of pride. You have to will your time over to God and ask him to give you wisdom, give you knowledge, give you understanding. It is uh, the benefit of a good Christian. And sometimes when we make some decisions and the decisions turn around against us, we try to blame it on somebody else when we did not use the wisdom of God and ask him, ask him. Sometimes we believe and we trust our own initiatives, but we need to go and ask God when we don't understand. <laughs> Many things about tomorrow, you may have never understand, but thank God we have a God that gave us access to the throne room when we can go before him and ask anything in his name and he will point you to the word of God and you will know very well where you stand. God's word is a light. Seek wisdom. Be a wise Christian. Make sure when you're doing the things for God, you are directed by God. When God says it, believe it and practice it. Sometimes it's a strain, it's hard, 
but hold on to the promises of God. He will never give you a wrong advice or lead you in the wrong direction. Believe God. Believe God. He says here, and he'll give you righteousness. Now I want to tell you something. Righteousness is a life. But it's also a growth. You start somewhere. Your behaviors, your patterns, your lifestyle, the way you walk, the way you speak, your behavior in church and your behavior out of church must be consistent with righteous living, with the righteousness of God. You can't be holy in church and unholy out of church. Holiness is a lifestyle. You got to either be righteous or you're not righteous. You don't feel guilty when you go in certain places and you do certain things. It tells me something. The Holy Ghost cannot abide in that temple and I tolerate unrighteousness. He can't. It is a lifestyle. It starts in the morning when you get up. <laughs> oh, it starts when you get on your knees before God. And you find yourself in a corner and you lie on your bed, whatever form you choose to take, but you start putting God first in the day that he has blessed you with. You have to start demonstrating the attitude of a righteous Christian, a righteous God lives within you. And because of that, the righteousness of God is a part of your DNA. You can't tell me you're well saved and you do something wrong or you slip off the line and the Holy Ghost doesn't immediately tell you, hey, you went off. A true child of God is close to the Holy Ghost. Immediately when you do something or you say it wrong, he tells you immediately and thank God for the advocate. He's always there to present a case on our behalf to the Father. And Christ is such a forgiving God. He's always willing to forgive every sin when man do not forgive you. And he will never forget you. Thank God our salvation didn't come from man, but it came from God. A good God, a forgiving God, a righteous God, a God. God of righteousness and holiness but we need to be a repented people to look unto God and ask him to cleanse us and cause us to walk in righteousness oh hallelujah I wish you understand when God empower you with his righteousness you are protected you are not only protected but you are sanctified praise the Lord he covers you. He clothes you. You didn't get away because you were good. And you didn't make it because of something. You made it because you were covered in the righteousness of God. How oh, you think the Christian got up this morning? Not on yesterday food. You got up this morning because he was covering you while you were asleep. With his righteousness, with his goodness, with his grace. When your thoughts was not even on him, he was looking down with compassion. He was seeing a person there that he chose out, that he set apart, that he sanctified, that he called righteous. You see, he's a righteous God. And when he saved you, he saved you because of his righteousness, because of his grace, because of his mercy. Oh, thank God this morning, but you should say he's a righteous God that's who he is he sanctifies oh I'm so glad I'm so glad I'm so glad that even before I give myself he predestinated me and he sanctified me and you know that one day I will stand somewhere and declare the gospel of righteousness 
Thank God. We serve a righteous God. How many of you are living in righteousness? Hallelujah. How many of you are living knowing that you're living in holiness? God is looking for the gift of righteousness to be demonstrated. You don't have to walk San Fernando and be ashamed to say you're a Christian. When they see you, they must smell you. They must know you that you belong to Jesus, a righteous God. You're going to him because he loves you. You have a message. Tell people about your God. Tell people about your Jesus. And let me tell you something. Because of the democracy in Jesus, <laughs> you don't have to accept what you, what you tell them. But tell them. Tell them Jesus saves. Tell them his blood washes. Tell them, look at me. Look where I was. Look where I am. And I want to join you to tell me where I'm going. I am walking. I am living in the righteousness of God. How are you getting through? Like you win lottery. I didn't win no lottery. But I'm stepping in the righteousness of God. And the Bible told me, then David says that, that surely his goodness and his mercy, and I don't have to follow it, but walk in righteousness, walk in holiness and the goodness of God it shall follow me all the days of my life even when I go to dwell in the house of the Lord righteousness holiness that's all it takes <laughs> it's just a little effort do what God said. Believe God's word. Stand on the promises. Hold on to the hem of his garment. Say, God, I will let you go. You bless me. God wants to bless this morning. His church with righteousness. He wants to bless his church with holiness. He wants to bless his church with every good and perfect gift. And sometimes, let me tell you, don't blame nobody. You holding back your own blessings. You're blaming somebody else. You holding back your own blessing. And then you will go and you say, I don't get nothing down there. You will only get what you put in. I leave home this morning with the blood over me. I didn't come here for no blood. I came with the blood. I live home with my righteousness. I didn't come here for no righteousness. Because I say, if all of us come here on one accord, we will move the roof for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's a lifestyle. You are sanctified. You are set apart. You were specially chosen and made in the own image and the likeness of God. You don't let nobody tell you that you're ugly and you're looking good. Tell them, watch good. Take the cataract out your eye. Watch me. God took his time. He molded me. He made me. He fashioned me. And he chose me. And he called me the righteousness of God. And let me conclude it to you now. He sanctified me. That's what he did. That's what he did. And then he says here, yeah, he will give you redemption. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> what could have washed away man's sins? What could have turned us where we are today is only because of a plan that was put in place, the redemption plan. God is concerned, very concerned about man's salvation. It is the key that enters the door to eternity. You must be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Some of you forget the plan. Sometimes you made some very good promises. You told God when you came, you would do all kinds of things. 
Some of you come and you tell the pastor, you will do all kind of thing in the church. You made your promises and sometimes when you get a little promotion on the job and you have a title, the church is too small to be associated with. So you walk out and you go. And you start putting down gradually the principles of the word of God, the first love taking second place. And you start to miss service and you start to miss tithing and you start to miss giving and you start to miss and you miss until one day you miss out on the redemption that God has given you. But Paul was saying to us here, that you don't need to glory in yourself. Sometimes that is what we do as believers. We allow a little name to get to our heads and we start to glory in ourselves. And God says, let no flesh glory before him. The higher you go, is the more humble you must become. Christianity is humility in Jesus. Don't let no name and no position carry you up. Because when you climb up with name, when they pull it from below you, you will come down easy, you will collapse. Let no flesh glory before the Lord. In other words, put away self. Put away unrighteousness. Put away ungodly principles. You don't have to write no Bible and write no doctrine. It's in the word of God. If God said, believe it and practice it. He said, and I'll give you redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. I want to tell you something, beloved Christians. Whatever you have, it don't belong to you. God is looking for your message. How many of you know that your life is an epistle? It is going to be read by all men. All men that you come into contact with your life is going to be read. But you must have something for mankind to read about who you are. You must have something. God is saying this morning to us to aspire to become a church of righteousness. That is not difficult to do. And that does not start when you come here on a Sunday morning. It starts at home when you sit by the table with your Bible and you're praying and meditating on the word of God. You must let your neighbors know who you are. You must let them know. Let me tell you something. The day you declare your Christianity, let me tell you something. You become a star boy. You get on television one time. Everybody watching you. They're looking at you. They're not looking for your righteousness. They are looking for your faults. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're not looking to see how much times you go to church and how much hymns you hear you singing. They're looking to see when you do something wrong. Because that lifestyle that you're demonstrating of a holy and a righteous God. It is disturbing them. You can live so straight on the line. But if God hold in your hand. And God be for you. Then tell me who could be against you. 
And that's why I say to you this morning, you are not your own, but all that you have and all that you are, you belong to God. You belong to Jesus. His name is in you. He say he wrote your name in the palm of his hands. Your picture, your continents are engraved in his hand. And every time he look in his hands, he sees you because you are sanctified. You are redeemed. You are set apart. You are chosen. You are righteous one. You are the righteousness of God. Oh yes. It does not matter if your name don't make the big books and you're not in the first 10. But once your name is found written, hallelujah, in the Lamb's book of life. And God say you're saved, you're well saved. Praise the Lord. That's what kept us walking daily, step by step in the righteousness of God. Can't make it on my own. Can't make it on my own. I need help. But thank God I lift my eyes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, you thought I was looking to you? No way. <laughs> Too many addresses down there. But I got one address. Unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. He made heaven. He made earth. And I want to tell you, he made me. Amen. That's what he did. Living in the righteousness of God. You can't be in want. Things might look a little dim today. But stay in the righteousness. His help is coming on the way. You will get more than you need. More than enough. He's the God of your abundance. I said stay in the righteousness of God. Sometimes when we try to help God, we help ourselves out of the blessings of God. We try to help ourselves. You know what I mean by that? Sometimes we do some things that are not godly in order to achieve our goals. And God ain't got vexed too much. It's a little one thing to do. The fact that you can confess that he ain't got vexed too much, you know you did something wrong. Stay in the righteousness of God. David said, I was young. Now I'm old, yet never have I seen the righteous forsaken. Oh, hallelujah. I stand on the promises of God that no good thing will he withhold from me if I walk uprightly before him. I stand on the promises. I ask God every day to cause me to walk in his righteousness. To live in his righteousness. That's your duty. As a good Christian. Many of your failures is because you put down your benefits. You put down your sanctification. You put down your wisdom. You put down your redemption. You lay it down. You couldn't take it no more. Pass off. Had it to my head. I don't know what to do again. All he's saying, come back and walk in the righteousness of God. Do you know the steps of a good man? Who order them? God orders them. And he calls you to walk in righteousness. God is calling for holiness. Righteousness. Believe in Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Never you will let go your hand. Believe that he's able, capable and competent to keep you to rough times, to good times, to bad times. The God that you serve is able. Abel, I believe in the righteousness of God. It's a lifestyle. You have to always be sharp. Clothe it by the word. Through the word. In the word. 
That's what he's saying to the church by the theme. The righteousness of God, whatever we do, whatever we say, it must depict the righteousness of God because we are believers of God. We are believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. The righteousness of God. Living daily in his righteousness. And God don't ask of you anything that you can't afford to give and do. Anything he asks of you to do, he knows that you have the competence within you to do it and do it to the best of your ability. I tell people, if God call you to be a custodian in the church, sweep the church clean. Give him your best. You're singing? Don't sing because you want somebody to hear your voice. Sing unto God. Let the anointing bring out the message in the song that somebody will be blessed by your singing. Whatever you do, you play an instrument, dedicate your fingers to God and play it all to the honor and glory of God that his name would be exalted. That's what you do. God wants to bless this church to the other level. He wants to promote us to be a righteous church. Living and walking and believing in the righteousness of God. I know that you have received and you have received some of the benefits of walking and living in the righteousness of God. Verse 13, our message today gives us the benefits of living and walking in the righteousness of God. It speaks about sanctification, wisdom, righteousness, and redemption. So I hope you have enjoyed this message. And as you go into your week, you will walk in the righteousness of God. May God bless you. Read well.